Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me as always is Bob Cook, psychotherapist based in Manchester and the founder of the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy and one of Bob's passions is literature and he's going to share with us a really special book today. It's a biography written in 1984, I've got my notes here and it's called <laughs> Eric Byrne, The Master Gamesman by Elizabeth Watkins Jorgensen and Henry Irving Jorgensen. And just before we started this, you said this is quite a dark book. book. Yeah, yeah, it's a different type of biography from an earlier biography, which is called A Montreal Childhood, I think. And, and it was written by, I think I had more of the family's blessings, really. That's Eric Byrne's family blessings. And it concentrated a lot more on the early childhood of Eric Byrne and talked about uh, the, really the, youthfulness of Eric Byrne and how he became a GP and how his father was a GP and how he carried on that tradition and then talked about he became a psychiatrist and it was more just a lighter book about the lighter side of Eric Byrne and never went into what I would call the darker more grittier sides of human nature. Yeah so the the Montreal childhood is really the public side of him the face that Maybe people yeah. in the psychotherapy world and the press might have might have known, but this book sounds like it's more looking inward towards you know his his family and and the kind of mechanisms that went on in his his life. Yeah, for example, he was married three times. He was married early on to a woman called Eleanor and had his first child. Uh, oh, I don't know the age, but it was really early on, and they didn't. They had a temptuous sort of marriage it was very very up and down and when you read this book it sounds like i don't know how much they were actually in love with each other i mean this is me speaking but when i look at the book itself i wonder what brought them to marry and i, I wonder if it was because you know a child was on the way really Yes, yes. So it might it might have been more of a marriage of convenience yeah I, I mean, some people might know tweet me or email me but the way i read this book uh that's my personal take on it yeah, uh, yeah. it talks very much about the struggles of that time and of course his next two wives which was the second one was called dorothy uh, i don't know how long that lasted but a far more years i think and then they, there was a divorce then and then three years before his death he married a sort of young beauty a lot younger than him called toy t-o-r-r-i and that was a very well, that seems to be a very um, spontaneous, free child, romantic love in those last three years of his death. A blonde beauty, the authors call her. Oh, right. A blonde beauty. That's kind of sensationalizing things a bit, yeah, that's, isn't it? That's the chapter. It's called The Blonde Bombshell. Oh, wow. Okay. So, uh, yeah, a little, bit of, a little bit of kind of sensationalism in this book. Yeah, I well, think well, so. Yeah, what would people find out about, about Byrne that maybe they wouldn't have known? Well, they might see him as a womanizer. And the other book certainly didn't paint him as a womanizer in any form mm. or shape. Um, and they might, um, you know, get more information on uh, not only the genius side of him, which clearly was created a whole form of social psychiatry called transaction analysis, but also the rebellious side of him, the quirky side of him, the side of him that was, you know, wouldn't be compliant really to, certainly not to marriage in a way. Mm. Um, also, they learn about his um, obsession with poker. Yes, because you said he wrote two books on it. Oh, he's well known in the poker sort of world. And he, just, he wrote books and he, he was an expert in poker. And some might say he was better known in the world of poker than in, the, in this world of the new social psychiatry of transaction analysis, because he was uh, traveled many miles for poker matches. It's interesting, you know, when, you, when you've talked about him and certainly as you're, as you're kind of explaining this new information, it strikes me that this ego state model could have actually been developed for him because he seems to fit into those distinct states, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. And in his first book in 1961, Transaction as Psychotherapy, he, he created a character called a character, character, yeah, 
called Dr. Q, who was an eccentric, quirky um, doctor or psychiatrist. And I've, I, I wondered if it was taken off the image of himself because this book does a paint a picture of an eccentric genius, really, who was very quirky, um, a genius of 202 uh, in, in the IQ, but also very erratic in many ways. Yes, and sometimes and sometimes those go together. The, the the kind of border between genius and you know sometimes the terms used madness can sometimes <laughs> can That's sometimes true. be very narrow, can't it? Oh yeah, I mean a two hundred and two IQ. Yeah, that is that is that is exceptionally high. That isn't it? I mean the average IQ I think is a is a hundred and one, isn't it? For oh, yeah, yeah, me and mortals like you and me. <laughs> yes, two hundred and two. Yeah, Tony Buzan who who's the chairman or was the chairman, I'm not sure he's in life, of the, of the UK Mensa, and he created mind maps. His uh, uh, IQ was, I think, 180. So if you go to 202, that's pretty off the scale, isn't it? It is. It is. And, uh, yeah, he gives that. He gives that. You see him, he does look, in, certainly in the pictures, I see him, he does look... Um, he does, does look a little bit eccentric. He has that kind of demeanour about him. Maybe I'm just projecting that. Onto no, no, no. If you go into if you go into YouTube, yeah, Burning, there's I think four only uh, YouTube's black and white YouTube's back in the day before 1970 when he died, and he's talking about TA in a car, uh, uh, an early car, and talking about TA and when he's being filmed beside the beach, and there he comes over in those videos as you know fairly unorthodox and so yes. as creative as he was so i think the the actual youtube's paint him that way and i'm sure he was that way by the way yeah i mean it's it's interesting isn't it there has been lots of other kind of um, geniuses i'm thinking of uh, rd lang the british psychiatrist he was he was quite eccentric by all accounts oh very uh, much very very much yeah, yeah he was wasn't he yeah and patricia clarkson yeah, genius as well who killed herself. Yes, in Amsterdam, a very, very, very creative, hugely intelligent genius, and pretty eccentric. Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of this book, who would be drawn to it? Who would who would benefit from so, reading? I think, I think students, in in many many ways, are interested in the life and times of somebody who created. Uh, a new social psychiatry, a new uh, whole new psychotherapy model called transaction analysis, uh, and and through both books, Montreal Child Book and this book, they would get a complete, um, you know, bigger dimensional picture mm. of the darker and lighter parts of a human person, rather than just this, you know, Montreal Childhood. Often the eulogies that come. Yeah. without a real sense of you know that this guy's human yeah and 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 even he even his death was um it was it was yeah. a little unusual he, he died he had a heart a double heart attack on yeah. count mel beach didn't he he's age 60 what's interesting again in this book is they they talk about how the the new family of Burn, if you like for the family of transaction analysis which he created in 1961 and when he died in, um, you know, nine years later, there'd been two or three conferences and he had a new set of friends, a new family, if you like. But when he died, his proper family, his biological family, banned any of the TA people, the senior TA colleagues or his family, if you want to put it that way, from the TA world, from the funeral. And the last chapter in this book is, is very much about the grief of people like Claude Steiner, who's the prodigal son of Eric Byrne, and many of the contemporaries around, who had to find a way to grieve by themselves because they weren't allowed to um, mm. have the ritual of the funeral. Yeah, like the like the man himself and his work. It's it, there's a certain amount of irony in 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 this, isn't there? The fact that um, the very work he created and the very the very structures he created weren't present. At his at his final time when he was when he was uh, at his no. funeral, yeah, he's yeah. a professional baby, yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. There's a huge divide between the biological family and his professional family. 
Fascinating. So it's a, a book, it sounds like it's not to be missed if you're a student. It's called Eric Byrne, The Master Gamesman, Elizabeth Watkins jo Jorgensen and Henry Irving Jorgensen. It was published in 1984. Um, Downstairs, we'll put a link to the, um, the book so you can inspect it. Uh, why don't you put some comments in? Have you read the book? What are your views on, on the life and indeed the death of Eric Byrne? And as always, Bob doesn't get paid for these book reviews. He does them just for his love of literature and sharing his knowledge. Um, so as always, Bob Cook, thank you very much. Thank you, Ollie Oaks.